We've got a star-studded slate for tonight in Daily Fantasy Baseball. We've got some ace pitchers. we got a Coors Field slate. And I'm going to be greedy and say that I want both. I want to get to Garrett Cole and Corbin Burns without limiting myself as far as hitter goes. I think the good thing is I can be greedy for tonight because I think there are ways we can make this happen, whether it be with you know, some creativity with which guys we use at Coors Field, with our second stack, we pair with our Coors Field stack. I think we can make this work, and I don't think it's honestly that hard. So we get to have our ace and stack them up too, and I'm pretty excited to do so. So we'll dive on in and get you set for this Friday night slate. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Here to break down Friday's 10-game main slate with lock set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. Quick note, uh, I'm recording this on Thursday night because I'll be out of town on Friday. So there may be some changes of pitchers. I'm also recording this before salaries are out because I don't think the slate's going to go up until 10 and I can't record that late. So talking to you before salaries are out. It should be okay. I think we have a general idea of where guys will be and stuff like that, but just letting you know that in advance in case they decide to magically jack up everyone at Coors Field or make Garrett Cole like $15,000. Just full disclaimer at a time on that. And also in case any injury news breaks after we're recording here on Thursday night. Weather also subject to change because of the time I'm recording here. Uh, but my glimpse at the weather looked pretty good with no real issues. The There is a chance of rain at Coors Field. Looks like it's light rain and it should pass pretty quick. So I'm not overly concerned there. I think they should be okay to play that game as scheduled, maybe a delay, but I don't believe it'll be anything too bad beyond that. So it should be a pretty fun slate with no massive weather issues impacting it. Quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Our NASCAR podcast for Road America is already up, breaking down my top options for DFS or Road America, a road course for this week. Also talking about ideal roster construction for this kind of race for a very, very short race. Broke down all that over on the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed. Find that wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review. We got UFC coming up later on via Austin Swaim as well with the biggest slate this weekend. So hit subscribe. Uh, to get those podcasts right as they are posted. This baseball season turned K's into cash and big hits into big wins with FanDuel Sportsbook. Right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 with great promotions every day, a safe and secure app, and the ability to get paid fast. There is no better place to bet America's pastime than on FanDuel or than America's number one sportsbook. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app today and sign up to get started with your no sweat first bets up to $1,000. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. Refund issued as non withdrawable free bets that expire 14 days after receipt. First online real money wager only. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Louisiana, call 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, text uh, or text open Y or call 1-877-8 Hope and Y. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. And in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview again, no salaries as of yet, uh, but you can probably tell who the good guys are going to be for tonight. We've got Corbin Burns. We got Garrett Cole uh, as the top end guy. Christian Javier is on the slate as well, coming off his uh, contributions to the no-hitter. So, a pretty good number of really solid guys for tonight. And again, I want to be greedy. I want to jam in all the studs I can get. I don't think it's too difficult to stack Coors Field today while still getting to our stud pitchers. So I see the second value stack to pair with them. And I think that allows me to go with Corbin Burns and Garrett Cole as my top two guys. I'll go through Burns now as he is my top ranked pitcher of the night. Burns is facing the Pirates, and that's a big part of this. It's a pretty good matchup. They have a 92 WRC plus versus righties. The bigger draw, though, than that is their 25% strikeout rate. That is the second highest mark on this slate. Burns himself has the second highest strikeout rate in the slate as well. It's at 32% for the full season. Comes with a 6% walk rate, a 35% hard hit rate allowed, 
And that's translated to good results, not just peripherals, but good results as well. He has a 2.41 ERA. Burns has gone seven plus innings in seven of 15 starts, including each of his past two. That's helped him at double digit strikeouts in a whopping one third of his starts, which is a pretty absurd number. Burns does have about a four percentage point gap in his strikeout rate on the road versus at home. So it is a slight downgrade there. Only one of his double digit strikeout games has come on the road as well. Kind of picking nits, honestly, because still a 30% strikeout rate on the road. A lot of those road starts have been against lower strikeout teams and the Pirates are not that. So even on a slate where I want to stack Coors Field, Burns will be my top pitcher of tonight with a slight edge over Garrett Cole. I think I can make this work and I like to do so. So Corbin Burns, even if I have to get creative with my stacks, will be my top pitcher of the night. Cole will be number two, and he's behind Burns only due to his matchup. Cole's facing the Guardians, and they are a low strikeout offense, just a 16% strikeout rate against righties this year. And that is a big downgrade for anybody. It is for Cole, too. My strikeout projections account for that, and I've got Cole projected for 7.5 strikeouts tonight. That is one full strikeout behind Burns. But it's ahead of everybody else in this late behind Christian, Christian Javier, and Javier is in a pretty tough matchup himself in, ter- in, in terms of, you know, it's a tough team. He lets up a lot of hard contact. That's why I have Cole above Javier. The strikeouts should still be there for Cole at 7.5. That's not that bad. And that's because Cole is in a groove right now. He has a 34% strikeout rate in his 10 starts since he started throwing his slider more often. He did face the Astros in one of those, another low strikeout team, and Cole had eight strikeouts in that game. And Cole's home road splits are a bit smaller than that of Burns. And they're both these guys are on the road for tonight. I still heavily prefer Burns because the matchup is so discrepant between the two. But there are obviously situations and realities where Cole does outscore Burns and will likely get a roster rate discount on Cole due to the different matchups these two guys have. So I don't blame you if you skip over Cole to load up on Coors Field after you go with your Burns lineups. I still think he's worth it, and I want to use him here. He's just too good to ignore. I get it if you want if you want to skip over him, but for me personally, he fits my process still, despite the matchup. I think he can easily be the SP one tonight, so I want that upside. To me, it's Burns one, Cole number two. As far as value plays go, again, I don't have salaries yet, but I do think that Lance Lynn is probably going to grade out pretty well from a a value perspective. Let's talk about him here. We'll talk about one more value play in things to watch. Lynn is facing the Giants, which means it's not a great matchup, but it is in San Francisco. It's a great park for hitting for tonight or for pitching for tonight because the projected temperature there is 18 degrees colder than any other game on the slate. It's very good for pitching. Lynn's results thus far have not been very good. His ERA is 6.19 in three starts. That's even despite facing the Tigers and the Orioles in that three-start span. His peripherals are a lot better, though. He has a 3.32 skill interactive ERA. That number might be even better if his strikeout rate were higher than 23%. But I think that number could go up because Lynn's swinging strike rate is 15.2%. It's a very good number. Part of that is the matchups he's faced. Obviously, you get a boost from having two softer matchups in there. But against the Jays, the one tougher matchup Lynn has had, he had a 13% swinging strike rate there, too. It's pretty good. He's fully stretched out. He's Lance Lynn. He is made of steel. He had 109 pitches in his most recent start. He is struggling with hard contact, which is why his ERA is so high, and that's why I might not get here. But it's Lance Lynn, man. He's weird. He's fun. He'll probably have a low salary. I've played worse options. So not opposed here at all. I think that Lance Lynn actually is a pretty decent option, depending on how much salary he can save you. I need a pretty big gap to justify it below uh, Cole and Burns, because there's a big downgrade behind those two guys. But I would say Lance Lynn's pretty solid. If Christian Javier were to be, you know, 9,000 or so, I'd probably overlook the matchup and overlook the hard contact. But I think that uh, he'll probably be above that. So Lynn, to me, the top value, we'll talk about Joe Ryan in things to watch. First of all, let's talk about some stacks here for today. The Rockies are facing the Diamondbacks at Coors Field. Neither offense good against left or righties, but I still want to stack them here. We'll start with Arizona because I prefer that side between the two. We'll just touch on the Rockies here after that. The Diamondbacks are facing Antonio Sensatella, who's had good results at home this year. Probably shouldn't have good results, though, because he's made 12 starts overall, and he has a 4.70 skill interactive ERA with a 13% strikeout rate. He's letting up a 41% hard hit rate, 
does get some ground balls, but it's not enough to cancel out the rest of the stuff in his profile. So when you put that at Coors Field, it's a bit surprising that since the tail is ERA at home, it's 3.52. I'm not convinced that will stick because it seems like there's a lot of cluster luck in what's happened for Sensatella so far. Opponents have a 503 slugging percentage against him at home. It's 488 on the road. Their Woba is actually higher at Coors Field than it is elsewhere. The strikeout rate is lower at home. He lets up more hard contact and more fly balls as well. So I cannot explain to you why Sensatella's ERA is lower at home. But I can say to you, it's probably not going to stick. That means we can go to Arizona here, and I think we can do so with a pretty good amount of confidence. So Arizona, I think, should be a focal point of our stacking for tonight. Within this stack, Dalton Varsho got moved down the lineup pretty recently, but so he's no longer hitting leadoff, but he's still hitting tanks. He has a 214 ISO against righties this year, tons of hard contact, tons of fly balls. He can steal some bases and maybe less likely batting fifth or sixth versus first. But I still like him a lot. I think I'd probably put him above Alec Thomas, even though Thomas is now batting higher in the order. I would go Christian Walker first, David Peralta second, Varsho third, Thomas fourth. And I think that the overall point here is I still really like Varsho, despite the demotion in the order. Hopefully he has a slightly, slightly, slightly lower roster rate batting sixth than he would otherwise, but... No concern to me. He is still a true stud that I love to use in DFS. I do think the Rockies are up there with the Diamondbacks for tonight. They're facing Merrill Kelly. I think he's a pretty solid pitcher, which is why I prefer Arizona. But I'm not sure that Kelly is someone we need to avoid at Coors Field. For the full season, Kelly has a 4.28 skill interactive ERA with a 20% strikeout rate. But his batted ball is pretty good. He's let up a 35% hard hit rate with a 35% fly ball rate. In most situations, almost every situation, we are not stacking against this guy, but this is not most situations. We've seen Kelly have some rough outings. He let up uh, four plus runs in two of his past three starts, and those two games were against Cincinnati and Detroit at home. He also struggled earlier on this year against Pittsburgh, and that's part of it too. You know, part of the reason we could feel good about going here is that the schedule hasn't been too bad for Kelly so far. No games at Coors Field. His past five games have included four super advantageous matchups. So this would be a good matchup uh, if it were in Arizona for Kelly, but we're not. We're at Coors Field. That's tough. And he showed he can mow through this lineup when they were in Arizona. Eight strikeouts across eight and a third or eight and two thirds innings. But this is different. He's at Coors Field. So I think the Rockies, despite not being good offense, being pretty bad, honestly, and Kelly being a decent pitcher, I do still think the Rockies grayed out well for today. If you can only get to one core stack, I would say prioritize Arizona, but still get some lineups in there with the Rockies as well. One guy I'm not super sure about within this Rocky stack is Chris Bryant. He didn't show a lot of power in his rehab stint. He did strike out quite a bit, had multiple strikeouts, and I think his final three rehab games. And since he's come back up, he's put 12 balls in play. Only one has had an exit velocity of at least 95 miles per hour. And those three starts were all against lefties. I will include him for sacks for sure, but he's not as much of a priority as he typically would be. So if, again, if we're going through the process of ranking out Rockies batters, CJ Crone's above him, Charlie Blackman's above him. I'd probably put Ryan McMahon above him too, personally, just like McMahon a lot. Um, I'll probably have Bryant within the top four still, so I'll still have a lot, but he's more of a rotational option versus a core play when I am stacking Coors Field. Now, if we want to load up a course, like I said, we'll need a, a, a value stack to pair with them, whether it be the Rockies, or Arizona, to get to Cole, Birds, et cetera, et cetera. There are two value stacks I like a lot. Those two teams are the Mets and the Twins. I'm going to talk about the Twins here. We'll get to the Mets in just a second. The Twins are facing Spencer Watkins, which blends everything you want together in a stack. Let's up a lot of balls in play. A lot of those are hard hits. For the full season, Watkins has a 5.70 skill interactive ERA with a 5.14 ERA. His strikeout rate is 11% with a 40% hard hit rate allowed. When Watkins came back up from his rehab stint, he was throwing more sliders and fewer curveballs. And that's just something he started to do before his absence from the, the rotation year. We've got a six-part sample on Watkins leaning more on that slider. The strikeouts are up a bit, which is good, but the hard contact is also up. So he did have success his most recent time out, uh, five shutout innings, but 
it's not going to bother me too much. I think the Twins offense, pretty lethal right now, pretty low salary too. So I think to me, they grade out well and are our top value stack of the night. And I'll be high on them in the situation. You got a lot of low salary guys here to help move the needle. Max Kepler, a 175 ISO against righties. Alex Kirilov has a 56% hard hit rate since he came back up from AAA. I like Gary Sanchez still. The righties have been pretty good against Watkins, so Jose Miranda could work for that as well if he's in the lineup. Uh, he's been hitting the ball better since he came back up, so Miranda and Sanchez on the right-hand side, Kirilov, Kepler on the left-hand side. It's not bad. So the Twins, a quality stack for tonight if you need to save some salary. Shifting two things to watch. The other value stack, again, is the Mets. They're facing Glenn Otto, who rejoined the big club last week, and the velo in that return was a little rough. Got knocked around big time, and that's been happening all year for Otto. It's not a good park for hitting in New York, but it is warmer than usual and warmer than a lot of other places for tonight in New York. So the Mets are right there with the Twins. If you need a value stack to pair with Burns or or Cole to stack Coors Field. I think the Brewers are the other spot you could turn to for hitters for tonight. They're facing Ronzi Contreras, who got a lot of strikeouts when he first joined the rotation for the Tigers, but... The velocity has stabilized across his past five starts and letting up a lot of hard contact and a lot of fly balls in that time. It's 84 degrees in Pittsburgh for tonight. So I think you can give the Brewers a sniff this time around. I said Tigers before for Contreras. I'm uh, thinking of uh, Rooney uh, Contreras. But either way, um, Ronzi letting up a lot of hard contact right now. I think we can stack the Brewers against him in Pittsburgh for today. The other value pitcher you could look at outside of Lance Lynn is Joe Ryan. He is fully stretched out now, um, coming off his injury. He's gone 100 plus in two straight starts from pitch count perspective. He had just one strikeout in one of those, so his floor is bad. Uh, he also had seven uh, strikeouts in another though, so he has a ceiling still, and you can have upside against the Orioles. So I'm not opposed to like Joe Ryan. I think that he could be a good option for today too. Probably it's between him and Lynn. I could go either way. I'm guessing Ryan's going to have a higher salary, though. So I'll go with Lynn 1, Ryan 2, depending on where they settle in from a salary perspective. Let's finish up with our dinger calls for today. The boring one going to Coors Field is Christian Walker facing off with Senza Taylor again. Not huge splits. We can go with righties or lefties against him. Aren't a lot of righties in the Arizona lineup anyway. But I'll go with uh, Christian Walker as a boring home run call for today. The fun one, let's go Kirloff. Not a big fly ball uh, batter. So that's kind of annoying from a dinger perspective, but did go deep a couple of nights ago, just crushing the ball overall. He had a lot of home runs in AAA once he got sent down. So I think Kirilov can get the job done. Love hard contacts. So we'll go with Christian Walker and Alex Kirilov as he dinger calls for today. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. Again, make sure you check back on starters, check back on weather to make sure things do not change overnight and uh, get update, updated numbers uh, there or updated New is there to make sure everything uh, stayed steady after recording here on Thursday night. Do not forget to check out our NASCAR podcast on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed and our USC podcast coming up on Friday via Austin Swain. Find that wherever you get your podcasts by searching for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. And while you're there, make sure you are subscribed. If you've got questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcasts. I'll be out part of next week through Thursday. So Austin Swain has you covered on Tuesday. No podcast Monday due to the 4th. Austin has you on Tuesday. Tom Vecchio has you Wednesday, Thursday. I'm back with you on Friday to talk more MLB DFS. Have a fantastic and a safe weekend. We'll talk to you once again later on next week. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.